Hi there, welcome to 90% Knitting. This is episode 311 and I'm Lisa, also known as FiberNymph across most of social media. Today is Saturday, April 20th. It's a beautiful sunny day, if not a little bit breezy, but we're up here on the ridge so we always have the breeze anyway. Um, it is Easter weekend, so if you celebrate Easter, happy Easter. Um, it's going to be a pretty low-key holiday for us tomorrow, just my husband and I and I bought a half a ham that I'll probably throw in the oven, but other than that, I don't think we're really doing anything too exceptional. I colored eggs, because I make hard-boiled eggs every week for us, just for breakfast anyway, and so this week's eggs I did color, so we've been eating colorful hard-boiled eggs all week. <laughs> anyway, um, it's been a couple of weeks since I recorded. I was away last weekend vending at the Allentown Fiber Festival, which was a wonderful event. I really had a good time. It was a nice show. Um, I've already put my application in and paid for my booth for next year, so I will be there again next year. So if you didn't get to come this year, maybe you'll get to come out next year. And it's nice too because it was less than four hours for us to drive out there. So it makes it feel like it's not really um, too, too far of a trek. It's, it's a nice distance to go to do a show. Anyway... Um, having been busy last week, I didn't record, so, and then this week when I got home, I didn't really have a chance to record because I had a lot of stuff I needed to do right away. So today's my first chance to record all week, and uh, I thought I would jump on it while I had some time. I do have to do some dyeing later today, though, so we're going to try to get through this. I have a lot to show you, knitting-wise. I have completed several things. I've cast on some new things. Some of them I've also completed. Um, so I'm going to just get started and start showing you these things. And the first one, you can probably already tell what it is. It is my beekeeper cardigan. And yes, I did get it finished in time to take to Allentown with me, which was my goal. Granted, I... I kind of made the sleeves a little shorter than they really needed to be or they were supposed to be. Although it was, you know, the pattern kind of left it up to you how long you wanted to make them. But I did make them about elbow length. They come to right up on my elbow. So, and I'm fine with that. I could always lengthen them if I decided I wanted to. But for right now, I'm fine with it. This is mostly going to be a show sample um, for the foreseeable future. Because even though today I can wear it in here, it's a little chilly out here. I don't have the heat on. Um, it's... It, you know, it's a wool, a woolly wool that I'm probably not going to want to be wearing like at shows or anything. In fact, I did not wear it at my show. I had it hanging on um, a hanger on a display hook thing, um, which worked out really, really well, as a matter of fact. I figured that way if somebody saw it and wanted to try it on, it would be much easier to take it down off of that and let them try it on rather than me take it off and say, here, put my clothes on. So anyway, let me. I'm gonna st um, back the camera up a little bit and stand up so you can get a little bit better view. I can't get the whole thing in the shot, I don't think, but you'll get to see it a little bit better. So let's see how this will work. Um, well, there you can see. <laughs> now we'll see the bottom two thirds from the boobs down. Anyway, this hits me a couple inches. Like my here would be my hip. Like right at the the top of the ribbing is about my hip level. So it's, it's falling a couple inches below hip level, which is perfect. I really like that for a cardigan. Um, when I finished knitting it, though, it was funny because it was significantly shorter. It was actually like about here, I would say. It was about three inches shorter when I finished knitting it. And then I blocked it, and it grew lengthwise, which I was not expecting from a non-superwash wool. This, I did get gauge, okay, I'll say that. So my gauge was correct, um, but it's, I feel like this was a, fairly, a fairly loosely knit fabric, um, and so I think that's probably why it grew the way it did. Um, it was actually a tiny bit longer than this, and it was a little roomier under the armpits when I first blocked it, and it was mostly dry and I tried it on. So I popped it in the dryer for about, I would say, five to ten minutes, I don't remember now. I kept taking it out and checking it um, just to get the last of that moisture out and to snug it up a bit, and it fits perfectly now. So, you know, that's a risky thing to do with non-superwash, but as long as you're paying attention to it and you know what you're doing, you can get away with you know, getting your fit a little bit better. So I'm really happy with how it fits. Um, I will say, when I had it hanging on the hanger at the show, I did have it pinned here with, let's see, did I bring it in? Yeah, I have a, a shawl stick. So I had it pinned in the front and closed that way. 
um, because this is meant to be an open sweater. I don't know that I can do this while I have it on. <laughs> Let's see. Well, this isn't perfect, but you'll get the idea. So I sort of had it like this on the hanger. And it looked really nice, actually, on the hanger. I think it looks a little funny on me this way, just because this is directly between the girls. That looks a little odd. <laughs> but um, in general, I'm not a huge fan of just open front cardigans, even though I don't always button my cardigans. And I do have some very lightweight, like commercially made lightweight, longer cardigans that I just wear around the house. And those are fine open, but something something like this, this heavy, I kind of want to be able to button it. Um, and again, I could retroactively, I could add buttons and then like steek some buttonholes into this. I know I could do that. Will I? Probably not, at least not in the near future. Um, it's fine the way it is. And again, it's going to be hanging in my booth more than it's going to be hanging on my body for the foreseeable future. Um, let me give you the details of this again. This is made out of my uh, Ridge Top DK, which is the 8020 Romney Falkland blend that I'm having custom milled for my shop. It is not a super wash wool, it's a nice woolly wool. Um, it was funny, I had sweater lots of this at the show for the first time, and everybody who saw it loved it. Um, no, I don't remember, I don't think I sold any sweater lots. I sold. I sold some of it, but nobody bought a sweater lot, but people, I don't think they were expecting to see it either, because I had so many people comment on the fact that, oh my gosh, you have non-superwash, it's so hard to find that, usually everything's superwash. And that that can be true at some shows. Um, I don't know that it was particularly true at this show, but I got where they were coming from. So I think it was probably more the fact that people weren't expecting to see a sweater lot of yarn that they could have purchased for this. and. Whatever, it's fine. I feel like at this point I'm just kind of getting word out about this base being around this and the fingering weight. Um, so anyway, um, where was I going with that? I don't, I don't remember. I got a lot of compliments on both the sweater and the yarn, and I, I felt really good about that. Um, the sweater itself, I did not have trouble knitting it. I thought it was a lot of, it was a fun pattern. Okay, I'm gonna bring this closer to me again, sorry. <laughs> You're moving all over the place. Okay, there we are. Um, it was easy to knit. I think I mentioned that while I was working on it. It was not a complicated pattern. Um, it, the way the pattern is written, can, it starts out like over informative and then as you get into it, it's like you have to sort of figure out what's going on based on how you know it's supposed to look. But in the end, it was not difficult. Um, and again, once I got past separating for the sleeves. I pretty much just did my own thing. I wasn't really paying attention to the pattern. Matter of fact, I did um, I did three by one rib. The pattern I think calls for three by one rib at the bottom band, but I also put it on the sleeves and I don't think that's what it calls for. Um, and then I just did two by two rib here at the, at the collar and down the fronts, which I think is what it calls for. I don't remember now. It's been long enough that I've blocked that kind of information out. Um, the one weird thing that I will say is based on the yardage that is in these skeins, which this is supposed to be 220 yards per skein. Now I will say some of the skeins that I've gotten from the mill have been a little light by like anywhere from two to five grams and they're priced according. Like I have everything priced so that it coincides with that light amount. Um, we're having issues getting <laughs> getting that taken care of. Hopefully the next batch of this will be a little bit more accurate. Neither here nor there. Anyway, even for that kind of yardage, um, I know how many skeins I should have used of this and what the yardage was calling for for the size that I made. The pattern called for over 1400 yards of yarn um, to be used for this. This sweater, the finished sweater, weighs less than 500 grams, which is not even 900 yards. I, I actually used less yardage on this sweater for the size that I was doing than the smallest size called for. I don't know where that discrepancy came from. I can't figure it out. As I said, I was getting gauge. Uh, like I even measured this after I blocked the sweater and everything. I checked my gauge. It's spot on. 
And yes, I made my sleeves a little shorter, but even if I would have made them full length sleeves, I don't think I would have hit a thousand yards. So where did that extra 400 plus yards go? I just, I don't know. Um, that's really weird. I went in through a lot of people's project pages for this sweater. I could not find any commentary anybody had about the, the yardage requirements being that off like that. I don't know. It's, it's weird. <laughs> um, I, I just don't know. I mean, it could be that like my row gauge might be off. I don't remember if I measured row gauge. I don't remember if row gauge was even mentioned in the pattern to tell you the truth. It probably was, but I'm not remembering it. I was paying attention more to stitch gauge, um, than row gauge. So I don't know. Whatever, I have a finished sweater. And this makes the third sweater for this year, by the way, for those of you keeping track at home. Um, I've been averaging one finished sweater per year for the past several years, so getting three done by April is quite a miracle. <laughs> um, I, again, I'm not sure how much usage I will get out of this this year just because it is getting warmer out and, um, you know, like it feels really good in here right now today. And, you know, I'm wearing my little bee top that I had found and um, I'm not super crazy about this neck of this top with this open sweater, to be honest with you. Um, I realized that after I had the sweater finished and tried it on. However, when I had it in the booth, I actually put the top on the hanger backwards. So I had the, the back of the top um, in the front and it looked really nice with that. I don't think I could get away with wearing this top that way though. Because again, when I had it hanging in the booth, there were no boobies to you know, deal with. Whereas I have them and have to wear clothing accordingly. Anyway, I can't think of anything else to tell you. Um, this was my warm honey, warm honey colorway. Oh, I will mention, I did alternate skeins through pretty much the whole entire sweater, except um, partway into the, the one sleeve. And I'm trying to, th I think it was this sleeve. You can, um, you can see this, I finished without alternating. And it is definitely a little lighter than up here. And actually, it looks worse on camera than it does in person. It's more obvious. Um, this one, you can see I was still alternating. I think I alternated down until I got to the ribbing because you can see a little bit of lightness there. Um, but I did alternate through the sweater. So you can see the lighter areas and the darker areas. But that's why you alternate <laughs> because... Um, you know, hand dyed skeins aren't always consistent, completely consistent with their color, especially with semi-solid colors, because you do have light and dark just even within the same skein. I will say that for my sweater lots that I'm now dyeing of this yarn to take to shows, I am putting dye lot numbers on them just because I feel like that will be helpful to people who are looking to buy a sweater's quantity. Like if you special order a, spe a sweater quantity from me um, through my shop, I always dye all the yarn for that order all at one time. So you know you're getting one dye lot, especially for you. But when I'm taking this to shows, people wouldn't really have a way of knowing that. And like if somebody buys, say, five skeins of a color and then I still have five left or four left or however many, excuse me, are left, and I want to add more, I want to have a way to differentiate the fact that they were dyed in different lots in case it ends up mattering to someone. So... I don't know why I'm telling you that now, but if you're ever to show where I have sweater lots of this yarn, you'll be able to tell <laughs> when the yarn was dyed and hopefully get a consistent dye lot if that's what you're looking for. I will be bringing my dye lot, my sweater quantities of the Ridgetop Fingering and Ridgetop DK to shows coming up this year. Um, not Needles Up because I just bring self-striping to Needles Up, but um, both Stitches events and all my subsequent shows this year, other than Needles Up at Rhinebeck. Um, those will all, I'll have my sweater quantities. I'm thinking about doing sweater quantities of a fingering weight superwash and possibly um, a DK. I was thinking about doing it in the, my Mountain Tweed DK. I don't know, what do you guys think? Like if you, if you had to choose a base for me to do, as sweater lots um, at a show for a fingering weight and then 
either the DK or worsted. I would prefer to do DK because it seems like a lot of people like to do sweaters out of DK. I could do my regular bona fide DK, which is 100% superwash merino, or I could do the mountain tweed, which I feel like people are really into the tweed right now. I don't know. I'm still thinking about it. That's a huge um, investment of time and resources for me to do that much yarn in sweater lots and have enough color options. I think I brought 10, 10 color choices to the show. Um, and I did the same color in both the fingering and the DK. Um, anyway, if you have input, like what you think, even if you're not coming in any shows <laughs> and you're not buying, um, I'm trying to decide between bounce, which is everybody's favorite fingering weight that I sell basically because people like that for almost anything. Um, it does have nylon in it also, so that's not necessarily needed for a sweater. Um, but I also have my sunshine base, which is a lighter fingering because you've got 490 yards to the skein in that. Um, and I, I know I have sold, people have special ordered sweater quantities of sunshine, you know, to make sweater projects. I just don't know if that would be the preference. So let me know, like what would your preference be in a fingering weight super wash yarn out of the bases I carry? And what would your preference be for a heavier weight yarn, either DK or worsted? Let me know, I'm, I'm really curious. Um, okay. <laughs> Sorry, that was kind of a shop thing, but it felt like a good place to put that in since we're talking about a sweater. So I think that's everything I can tell you about the Beekeeper Cardigan. Again, that's by Marie Green, who is all of knits. Um, she's got some lovely patterns on Ravelry, so check those out. And I do have, I think I have pretty substantial notes in my project page for this, if you're interested in knowing anything else. Or you can always just ask me a question. I'm happy to answer. Um, let's move on. I do have a sock finished object. Actually, I have two, but we'll start with this one. Um, I finally finished my Hello Pie socks. So these were my oldest languishing sock whip. Um, I want to say they were from 2015 I started those. Um, and I started them the year that I actually came out with Hello Pie. So this is one of my Pie Day colorways. Um, it was the Halloween colorway. Um, five stripes and they're all variegated colors. So that's why you've got the different kind of striping within the striping. Um, but anyway, I finished them. These had been my car knitting project this year. Remember I said I had stuck a project in my car and I was just kind of knitting on it here and there when I had time. I basically got to the point where it was close to being done. So I brought it in the house and I finished them off. And so now I have finished Halloween socks. Yay. Uh, I knit these. This yarn was dyed on my Squish base, which is Squish 2.0 is the 7525 uh, Corydale, <clears throat> excuse me, Superwash Corydale and Nylon Blend, which um, I really like. And I know I don't put it in the shop very often. I'm going to try to dye some up for the shop soon, though. So be watching. I know I get requests for it, and I'm just really bad about getting it in there because there's more work involved in doing this base. <laughs> um, anyway... So Hello Pie socks, they are done. Yay, they're finished. Okay, next up, hats. Um, this is the pattern. I don't think I actually showed you the finished product last time because I was looking for test knitters who would be able to do a quick turnaround on this fingering weight color work hat. And I ended up with three wonderful test knitters who were invaluable to helping me get that pattern done in time to put kits together to take with me to Allentown. So let me show you the hat. Um, I've actually knit two of them now, but I only had one done for Allentown. Um, so this is the hat, and indeed it is actually called Allentown. I could not think of a good name for it. I was having trouble with the naming, and one of my test knitters um, said, why don't you call it Allentown? You're making it for Allentown. <laughs> and she was correct, and so that is what I called it. So thank you again for that. Um, anyway, it's two, I have two sizes in the pattern. Oh my gosh, okay, this is gonna be bad for my hair, but I'll do it for you guys. Um, <laughs> so it is a slightly slouchy beanie. So you can see, this is the larger size. And there is a little bit of slouch to it. Um, what can I tell you about it? It's fingering weight. It is two color, color work, obviously. Um, you've got the striping in the ribbing and then you've got the color work. <laughs> um, so this one I did with, this is my ridge top fingering weight. So this is non superwash. And you know what, I'm so happy with how this turned out as far as the color work. You know, being able to knit color work, 
um, was the number one reason I had the fingering weight version of my Ridge Top yarn milled for me. I wanted a good non superwash color work yarn and it fits the bill perfectly. I'm really happy with it. Um, this is the Peacock Blue and Wisp color combination. Obviously I used Peacock Blue as my um, main color. Wisp was my contrast. Shows up really nicely. Um, I kind of stretched this a little too much when I blocked it because I used one of my styrofoam heads and it really kind of pulled the band out of um, out of proportion I guess it's a little wider than it needs to be I really need to reblock it so that that'll scooch in a bit um, but I didn't have time to do that before I took it to the show last week so anyway but since then I have knit the small size as well which I swapped the wisp to have be the main color on this one because I wanted a sample of how that looks too and then the contrast is the wild bergamot colorway um, and so this one is also, it's still slouchy, but it's also a little snugger and not quite as slouchy. So if you pull it down, oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. Hair. Yeah. Um, this is actually still a tiny, tiny little bit damp. Still it feels like in spots because I just blocked it last night. Anyway, so you can see there's still a little bit of slouch to it. I mean, this is down just about to the very bottom of my ears. But it's definitely snugger on so yeah i like both of them i like i like both ways <laughs> um it's definitely it's a unisex hat i mean my husband was actually my model for the pattern page if you go on ravelry and look at the patterns that's my hubby um, because i had really bad hair the day i needed to take pictures <laughs> <laughs> and he had just come home from work looking fresh as a daisy. So I said, hey, want to model a hat? And he's like, sure. So anyway, definitely works for men or women or however you identify. And um, yeah, I really like it. I did a little less um, of the straight main color knitting on this one than I did here, which is an option that I give you in the pattern um, if you want to make your hat a little less slouchy. So... I'm very happy with it. What's funny is I started this one in the car on the way out to Allentown and I was totally knitting it without the pattern, without the color work chart or anything because I thought, well, I just wrote this pattern. I know what I'm supposed to do. Um, I don't need the chart. Who needs the chart? <laughs> and I did fine until I got to this row here and I totally forgot to start adding these little motifs in and I didn't realize it till I was halfway through where they should have been and I was like, crud. And so I quit knitting. Plus, I was talking to my daughter on the phone at the time. So talk about, you know, a recipe for failure there. Distractions and no chart. And, um, you know, I have you switch to a larger needle size um, right around here before you start doing the color work. Except I was going through my bag that I took with me on the trip. I couldn't find the larger needle size. So I was like, oh. So I did the entire hat on the smaller needle size. Um... And then whenever I was getting ready to do my decreases on the top and I was rummaging around for my second needle to do that, I found the larger needle size. So I did actually have it with me. <laughs> anyway, the decreases are done um, in sets of SSKs and knit two togethers on the top. So I really like how that looks. Um, I don't know what else to tell you about this. I do have kits left over from the show and I've put those in the shop. Um, which I will, sh I will show you all the individual colors that I have whenever I get to the shop section of the show. Um, but I have five different color combinations and I think there's at least one of every one left and some of them have more than one. So you can look for those. Um, yeah, so these are both in the shop, these color combos, plus three others. Okay, so again, this is called the Allentown hat. It's also available on Ravelry, um, just if you want to just buy the hat pattern itself and not a kit with the yarn up oh, there's kitties chasing each other outside um yeah so anyway yay i was so happy to get that done in time for the show and to have it now um i love taking kits to shows kits sell really well at shows i just have to say <laughs> if you're if you're a vendor and a yarn dyer think about taking kits to shows oh uh, let's see what else oh i have a huge 
huge, 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 huge long-term project is done. <gasps> Look at my granny stripe blanket. <laughs> I finished it this week. I know this does not really show you anything. I can't hold it up. It's way too huge. Um, I will insert some pictures here though, because I took pictures of it on our bed. So you'll be able to see what it looks like. It is 72 inches long and about 62 inches wide. It's actually, it probably would have been even better if I would have made it 72 by 72, but obviously I could not add any width to it once it was on the go. Um, however, instead of using it with the 72 inches lengthwise, I think at some point I may just turn it on our bed so that the 72 inches widthwise, because the 62 inches still gives us plenty of length on the bed for us. My husband and I are both short, so you know it doesn't have to come up to our shoulders because we scrunch down under the covers when it's cold anyway. Um, but it's, it's so nice. I'm so happy with this project. I totally want to make another one someday. Um, I'm not going to do it right now, but I really, really enjoyed this, this project. I know it's not for everyone, but it made me happy. <laughs> so, um, I started this in December, December, 2016. It took me officially four days less than two years and four months. So it was two years, three months, and however many days. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just so pleased. Most afghans that I finish, I do for gifts. So this is, you know, one of the few afghans I've finished that's actually for me. And, well, for us, my husband and I. We'll both use it, but I'm just thrilled that it's finished. It took... I. I weighed it and I'm going with an average of 400 yards per skein, like per 100 grams, because that's an average yardage for a fingering weight. And I know some of these yarns that I used were probably higher yardage. Some of those were a little lower because they were little thicker yarns. So when I calculated it, it calculated out to over, I think it was 5,608 yards or something that's in this blanket. So that totally skews my yardage count for this year. It looks like I've, you know, knit a crazy amount of yarn already this year. Um, but I've, I've finished that much in projects. Let's put it that way. So anyway, I'm just so happy with it. I, you know, when you, somebody posted on, um, Instagram when I shared it on Instagram, you know, just saying how it feels so good when you finish that kind of an epic project and it really does, you know, I mean, it feels good to finish any project, but like to have something that long term finished finally, it was a good thing. Um, let's see what else I cast on and then finished <laughs> another pair of socks. And this is what I had mentioned that I was probably going to cast on and take with me to Allentown to work on, which I did. And these aren't on blockers. I'm not going to bother putting them on the blockers, but they are shorty socks. I'll actually stick a few pictures in here because I did take finished object pictures of them this morning right after I finished them. They were on my feet. Um, so this is my traveler base, my sport weight base, which is an 8020 superwash merino nylon. And this is the summertime blues colorway. And I had this yarn actually in my bin of whips from at least a year ago. I had the ball separated into two balls already, um, and I just never got them started. So I pulled those out, and that's what I worked on. I worked on them at the show. I worked them in the car, and I just finished them this morning. So I think I started them like the Saturday, like the week before the show. So technically it took two weeks, but like I cast them on just to have one on the needles. And then I didn't work on it at all the whole week until last weekend when we were at Allentown. So anyway, um, these are sport weight socks. So they are 48 inch, 48 stitches. I used US 1.5, US 1.5 needles. Um, this fits really, really well. Now I did just a regular heel flap and gusset. It fits my foot super well. The only thing, and it's only one of the socks, and you can kind of see this one's a little tighter than this one. Um, the one, the cast on edge is a little snug. Like I really have to stretch to get it over my heel. I don't know why, because that doesn't seem like that should be the case. So maybe I was just super tense when I was casting it on, who knows. 
The other funny thing is I wasn't even intent on making these a matchy pair of socks. Look how perfectly these match. Like these match more perfectly than socks that I try to get to match. <laughs> anyway, so I have my shorty pair of socks, which I love shorty socks for this time of year when it's still a little chilly, but I don't need a full sock going up my leg. Um, so these are perfect. I have enough yarn left from this skein that I think I can make one more sock and I may do that just to have as a sample for my shows. Um, if not a full sock, maybe I'll just you know knit up a stretch to show the striping pattern or something. Because I intend to wear these. These are not going to be kept pretty um, for very long. They're going to get, you know, messy. So, yeah, I have, these are my two leftovers from the two balls that I started with. So that's more than enough to knit a sock. So I will do one more probably. Okay, what else? Um, I think that's everything that's finished. Yeah, that seems like everything that's finished. Since I had finished the Hello Pie socks, I did pull another sock whip out of my bin of whips. Um, and that was this pair of socks, which I already had this sock done. This is my hoodwinked sock that I'm doing in this staggered rib pattern. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it on here. Um, it's just, it's a three by one rib. Yeah, I don't know. All right, it's a three by one rib that I do for about eight rounds and then I just shift everything so that the pearl, um, the pearl column lines up with the second stitch of the three knit stitches. And I do that for eight rounds. Do you know what I mean? Like I just shift, shift, shift. Um, it's not really much of a pattern and I'll probably, like I think I've done, I want to say I've done two other pairs using this kind of patterning. So this would be the third one. And I'm pretty sure that I probably spelled out what I did in those pattern pages on Ravelry. So I don't know that I'll ever actually write this up as a pattern. If I do, it'll be like a free pattern. But anyway, it's super, super easy. So um, anyway, I've had this one sock done for a while. And so I started the second one. Obviously, I haven't gotten very far, but I've got a couple inches going. The yarn, this is not my yarn. This is, do I have the tag in here? No, no I don't. It is, I don't have it there either. Let me see if I can get to my project page real quick here and then I can show you or tell you because I can't remember right off the top of my head whose yarn it is. The colorway is Hoodwink though, that's why I named them that. Oh, the Flying Kettle. And I think the base is Caspertine. Sorry, I have a hair in my face now. Caspertine. Um, it was not on, that name was not on the, the tag that came with the yarn. I remember that, but based on the yarn content, I think that's what it is. It's an 80-10-10 MCN yarn, which that's weird for me. I do not usually like knitting socks out of MCN for myself because I'm so hard on socks, but it is really nice and soft. <laughs> And this pair will be for me because the first two pairs of socks that I did using this pattern, I ended up giving away. The first one I gave to my mom because she was basically like, I like those socks. Give them to me. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I finished them at her house. That was when her husband was dying of cancer. And it's like, I wasn't going to say no to her. Um, I wouldn't have said no to her anyway. But anyway, um, yeah, so that was a few years ago. And then the second pair, I think I gave to Bill, to my husband. So these are mine. Um, so they'll get done eventually. I mean, like I said, I have the first sock done. It's not a big deal. Why do I have hair on my face now? I'm sorry, guys. I hate to fuss with my hair. You know, I got my hair colored yesterday and I got purple in it last time I, and she did it again. I feel like the purple is far less noticeable this time than it was the original time she did it. That's really weird, especially because right here in the sun, you should really be able to see it. Know what's going on there I'm gonna have to talk to her about that <laughs> neither here nor there all right I say that a lot don't I I'm sorry <laughs> so that is my next whip that I'm trying to finish um, I have another whip and you're gonna maybe laugh when you see what it is now that I finished this sweater I kind of felt like I don't have any sweaters on the needles I mean I do technically have sweaters in waiting like the tabbouleh sweaters in my whip bin, but I don't feel like working on that right now. And there's, oh, the the socks that I cut up and I was gonna repurpose the good parts of the socks. I was gonna try to do like a poncho or swancho or something out of those, which I haven't done yet. 
But then I had, do you remember, <laughs> the Elspeth Lavold silky wool um, yarn that I was using for the campfire cardi. Remember that? I started that last summer, I think. And I kept going back and forth. And when I was going through my whips, I finally decided, you know what? I don't like this sweater. I love the yarn, but I didn't like the sweater. I was going to frog it and just use the yarn for something else. So I set the project bag aside with the intention of frogging the yarn, of frogging the sweater, of recapturing the yarn. And then I looked at it one day when I went to do that. I'm like, you know, I really, really like this yarn. And I like the idea of a sweater. I just, it's a very light feeling yarn, even though it, it's a DK weight. It's just the makeup of it makes it feel very, very light and airy. So I wasn't sure how I was going to like it for that particular sweater. And I think the tweedy nature of the yarn mixed with the eyelet detailing of the campfire cardi, I think that's what I wasn't loving. So I looked at it and I thought, I have the, almost the whole upper part, the whole yoke of this almost done. I don't want to rip this out. Why can't I just knit this and make it just a plain stockinette cardigan? And I said to myself, there is no reason you can't do that. So let's go with it. And so that's what I did. I haven't ripped it out. <laughs> I've just continued to knit on it. And it's going, oh, I'm in the middle of a round, which is odd. But yeah, so I'm just going to do it. And it's going to have no patterning in it unless I decide to throw something in later on. I might do something down around the waist or something. I don't know. Uh, or the, not the waist, but like the hips, you know, the lower part of the sweater. And I'll have a sweater. I love this color. It's so pretty. I don't remember what the name of the yarn color is. It's just a number. It's on my project page. I'll link to it. Um, but this is Elspeth Lavold Silky Wool. And I like Silky Wool. I've had issues with Silky Wool in the past. Um, but that's more operator error on my part in washing it than anything. Um, but yeah, in general, I really like it. So I'm happy with it. I'm glad I decided to not frog it because like I said, I had so much done on the top part of it. I don't know. Sometimes it takes me a while to really be able to think outside the box of a pattern. As much as I change patterns up a lot of the time, like to completely just do something different after I've started it seems weird sometimes, but I don't know. It's working. I'm glad I'm doing this. Now the only problem is I'm not sure that I'm going to have enough yarn to do a cardigan the length that I want. In fact, I'm not sure I would have had enough yarn to do the campfire cardi the way it's written. I, I figured that out <laughs> after the fact. However, what I do have is I have just some odd skeins of Elizabeth Lavold in neutral colors, like a creamy white color. And I think if I add that in, like I could do a big color block near the bottom or do some striping. I think that might look kind of cute and it would look really well, good with this color. It would look well. It would look good with this color and it would be light and springy and everything. So I may do that if I need to. We'll see. Um, I'm too far at the top to really worry about it right now. But I have that option, so I'm not worried about running out of yarn, I guess is where I'm going with that. Or maybe the magical thing will happen that happened with this sweater, and I'll use like 30% less yarn than the pattern calls for. That's unlikely, but it's always a possibility, I suppose. So anyway, that is my current sweater width. I, I was having fun, though, for a while, just going through my Ravelry queue, looking at all the sweaters that I want to make. And I thought, I, the world is my oyster. I could cast on any of these. And I could have, but I really wanted to, I decided I wanted to do this. I don't know what sweater I'll do next, though, like my next actual cast on of a sweater. I, there's several color work sweaters I want to do. I'm just not sure I want to do color work right now. I don't know. We'll see. Again, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> I think that's going to be the name of this, this uh, podcast because I keep saying it. All right, let's see. Anything else? Uh, the only other thing I pulled out since I finished the granny striped blanket, and I do feel weird having this done because this was something I was working on at night, like before bedtime, I would add a row or two, and now I'm, I'm done with it. So I pulled out my log, my hand spun log cabin um, squares blanket that I'm working on. Um, I pulled the, I just have a big bag of yarn pulled out and all balled up and everything and ready to go 
to make squares. So I'll work on those, I guess. That's not as much fun as the crochet project was. I really did enjoy crocheting that. I need to learn how to do more in crochet. I keep saying that, but anyway. So that's gonna be my next Afghan product that I'll hopefully finish, because I do have a lot of squares for that already. I think I have 30 some squares. I think I calculated that I need 60-ish to get the size blanket that I really want. But um, yeah, I don't know, we'll see. I'm not too worried about that one right now. But that's everything in the knitting that I can show you right this second. I do have one more project that I started, but it's more related to shop stuff, so I'm going to wait and tell you about that when I get to shop news, which won't be long because I don't have a whole lot of other stuff to tell you yet. Um, I will just say that the Craft What You Love Along, um, which ended March 31st, I did announce winners. I don't think I've heard from everybody. Now, I will say when I podcasted last time, I announced the winners for the Craft What You Love Along, and I announced the winners for... Uh, the prize winners from the March Monthly Makes. I think I heard from the Monthly Makes winners. I don't know that I heard from all of the Craft What You Love Along winners, but I also have not replied to anybody. So if you did message me and say, hey, I was a winner, mail me my stuff, and this is what I want, I haven't replied to you yet. I know I haven't. I'm sorry. It's just been crazy busy with last week's show and then this week trying to catch up with other stuff. I will, I promise, get in touch with you soon. I haven't forgotten you, honest. Um, the Fiber Exchange and Spin Along. Um, technically, I said I was going to close signups for that yesterday. I didn't close the questionnaire yet, so I'll leave it open through this weekend. Um, so that way, if there's any last minute people who want to join, because we did get quite a few replies. I want to say there was maybe eight to 10 people, which I think that's pretty good. Um, I could be wrong on that too. I'm just guessing based on the number that I saw coming in. But anyway, if you would like to be a part of that, I'll, I'll leave the questionnaire live through this weekend and then Monday I'll close it and then I'll start pairing people up, um, for, um, for that for the fiber exchange and spin along. All of the information about that is in the Fiber and Dye Works group. Um, so if you want the down low on that project or that activity, event, whatever you want to call it, it's all there. And again, you can always PM me on Ravelry or email me. Email me is the best way to get a timely reply. Honestly, even if it's just something podcast related, email me, fibernymph at gmail.com. <laughs> um, the last thing for the 90% section is my new things. I don't have that much, which is a shocker because there were several vendors at the show last week that I could have gone hog wild with, but I didn't. I was good. <laughs> um, although I have a list of vendors to now stock because, you know, pretty things, right? But I knew I wanted to go to the Tanny Casey booth. Um, she's a bag maker. Her shop is on Etsy. I own several of her bags already, but I've never seen them in person, and so I was so happy to get to go to her booth, not only to see her, her wares, but to meet her, because she is a delightful person. Um, I thought I was going to get another wax canvas tote. She does these beautiful waxed canvas totes, and I have one. I love it. I use it all the time. But when I got to her booth, and it was on Sunday, like kind of halfway through Sunday, so it was kind of like her booth was pretty well cleared out because I had seen a lot of stuff in her booth the day before when I was just running through the room. She was actually in the building. I was out in the tent. Um, so, I, But I didn't have time to really stop and look at stuff that day. But I know she had a lot more things in there than what I saw the day that I was there. Um, but this popped out at me and I had to have it. So this is not a wax canvas tote, but it is a tote and it is adorable. Oh my gosh. Skunk, hedgehog, acorns. Are there other critters? Skunk, acorn. I don't, maybe that's not a skunk. It, could, no, it looks like a skunk to me though. Isn't that a skunk? I think that looks like a skunk. Do skunks eat acorns? I feel like they eat like grubs more so than acorns but whatever it's cute and all the mushrooms it's just this tickles so many parts of me so yeah this came home with me oh there is is this a bunny i think this is like a big round bunny <laughs> i don't know i love it um it's got these really nice sturdy handles and it's canvas inside and her she always does these pockets and it has these little grommets so that if you wanted to um, have two balls in there, you could bring them up through the grommets in that pocket and keep them separate, which I think is stunningly creative. I know, 
a lot of bag makers do that, but she does such a nice job. Her bags are so well made. <sighs> anyway, and then you've got a little D ring there and a little clippy clippy here. Um, she sells handles as well um, that you could buy to clippy onto things. So anyway, and this would also clippy this shut if you wanted to carry it this way. That's actually probably what that is meant for now that I think about it. <laughs> Which is also very clever. I really kind of like that. My gosh. How did I not make that connection before? I don't know. Anyway, so that was fun. But that was my purchase. That was my one purchase from um, from her booth. It was funny. There was a bag maker right across from me where I was vending. And I kept staring at this one wedge zipper project bag. And it was nice and big. I stared at it all weekend. And I could kick myself for not buying it. Because the fabric was just so adorable. I do that a lot at shows, which I should I should know better. And I know I could probably go to her online shop, but you know what? I just ordered a bag this morning from Bags by Awesome Granny <laughs> that also has really, really adorable fabric. But the fabric gets me every time. I don't need more bags, people. I don't need more bags. I mean, seriously, I'm walking around right now with one project. Actually, one of these was in a Ziploc sandwich bag. Plastic Ziploc sandwich bag. That's my thing that if I have just a single sock with a half a ball of yarn, I can fit it in there and throw it in my purse. That's what I'm carrying my stuff around and yet I'm buying project bags. I need help. <laughs> anyway, the other thing that I have that's new was not an Allentine purchase. This was actually something I had ordered a couple weeks ago online and it came from the UK from Countess Ablaze. I've never had any Countess Ablaze yarn. I've heard about her yarn. I follow her on Instagram. She is a hoot. Um, and I just, her colorways are fabulous. So these are two variegated colorways. Um, this one is called Fahrenheit 451 and this one is called Four Horsemen. Um, they are on the, okay, this one is on Lady Persephone Sock Yarn, which is a 7525 BFL nylon fingering weight. Um, I do not know if it is superwash or not. It does not say that. It just says BFL. It does say machine wash at low temperature, so I don't know. Um, this one is the Grand Merino DK, Grande Merino DK, which is a 100% superwash, extra fine merino. Um, these were both part of her Rebel Batch Dystopia line. I think Rebel Batch is like they're one of a kind batches and she doesn't do them again. Um, but the fact that they were her dystopia line just made me really happy for some reason. So if they were the same weight, they would almost go together, but they're not. And I don't know why I needed to point that out to you because you already know that. All right. <laughs> Those are my new things. Let's move on. I don't really have a whole lot to tell you for 10%. It's Easter weekend. Which, again, it's going to be super low-key for us here. I'm making half a ham tomorrow for dinner and some roasted veggies. That's it. <laughs> um, I did get out on my bicycle this week, though. That was exciting. The weather's finally gotten warm enough, so I got my bike out. I pumped up the tires, put the bike rack on the car, and I, Wednesday I had to go out to the end of the world where I used to live and they put in a brand new rails to trail trail last year. Um, they had started it a couple years ago, but then when they actually started doing work on it, like I had ridden on it before it was at all done and it was just a really horrible path, but it was a nice path to go on because it was semi level. But then they actually did all the grading and put the good stone down and everything. So it's now really, really nice. Um, it's eventually going to be quite longer and it's going to go, I think, 20 miles, 18 miles, I don't remember. But you can only go from like about halfway through it to the one end right now. I only did about nine miles because I only had about an hour's worth of time to ride and um, it was my first time out so I didn't want to give, I didn't want to go too far. I only did, I did about a little over four miles and then came back and rode. So I did about nine miles, <coughs> excuse me, which was just enough to cover an hour of time and it felt good to get out there and do that. Um, it's It goes kind of along another path for part of the way that's part of a park in that area. Um, and there's a creek that it goes along, which is par for the course with rails to trails things. They're oftentimes near rivers or creeks. 
So anyway, I'm looking forward to going back down there and riding the full length of it, hopefully later this year, um, throughout the warmer months. So yeah. So I did that, and then on Friday, I actually got out on my one motorcycle for the first time this year, because I thought, you know, we're going away on a motorcycle vacation in a few weeks. I should probably get out and ride before then, because I haven't been on my bike since, <laughs> any of my bikes since late last year, like after our vacation. I, I really did not ride much after we got back from vacation, to tell you the truth. Um, so it felt good to get out, and it was funny, because I was just, it was around 4.30, and I was finished with work. I thought, it's nice out, I'm going to get out, and I'm going to ride for a little while. And just as I was starting to get ready to go, Bill got home from work and I'm like, hey, I'm going out. Do you want to ride with me? And he was already on a bike. He's like, yeah, sure. So he came in and changed into a lighter weight coat because it was really quite hot. So we went out and rode for about an hour and then we stopped and got dinner. So that was nice. I felt very good on the bike, which is always nice because, you know, I'm a fairly new rider. This is, I'm going into my fourth year of riding. But other than last year when we took our long vacation out to Colorado and back on bikes, um, like the other two years that I've been riding, I haven't ridden a lot, um, just short spurts here and there. So I feel like last year was a really good transition year that I felt like I was really getting to be a a rider with more of a capital R. I guess whenever you ride over 5,000 miles on a vacation, that makes you a good rider or a bigger, a bigger R rider. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I'm still very new. I, I would not consider myself an overly experienced motorcyclist. So, and I did have issues coming back in the driveway because our driveway is my nemesis. And my husband is insisting that like, you've now got it in your head that the driveway sucks. And he's right, I have to get over this. But anyway, our driveway does suck. I just have to say that. <laughs> All right, that's everything I have for the main part of the podcast. I've got shop news for you. So. If you're going to stick around, I do have some fun things to show you that are in the shop and that are going to be going in the shop. Um, if you're not sticking around for that, then I will see you next time I record, um, which will be, I will be recording one more time before Needle's Up at the end of the month, uh, well, at the beginning of May, but I'll be recording in the end of the month. So one more time. I don't know that I'm going to be doing a shop update this month. I hoped I was, but probably not. But anyway... I do have some shop news and there will be some things going into the shop. If you want to hear about that, stick around. If not, I will talk to you in a week or so. Okay, so shop news. As I just said a minute ago, I do not have an official shop update scheduled at this point for my next update. I'd hope to be able to do one sometime between now and the end of April, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but I will be putting some things in the shop here and there. Please stay tuned into um, Instagram. Fiber Nymph Dye Works account on Instagram and the Fiber Nymph Dye Works page on Facebook. Those are the best two places to find out about anything going up in the shop, you know, at random times. <laughs> um, I do have the last T for two club shipment going out before the end of the month. I've got, I'm working on dyeing that now. Actually, that's what I'll be dyeing later today. So that is going out. Thank you so much to everybody who took part in that club. I've really had fun doing that one. And I do have an idea for my next club. I'm not sure when I'm going to be introducing that. It probably won't be until midsummer at the earliest, but um, I am excited about the theme for that one. So stay tuned for that. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, the Holiday Harmony mini countdown collections. Those are still up for pre-order through the end of April. So you've still got another, what, 10 days or so. Um, if you just go to the main shop page, um, click on, there's a little link at the top that says holiday, click that, and that'll take you to the page that has all that information um, and a link to the sign up questionnaire for that. Um, all that information's up there. I've talked about it the last several times, so I won't repeat it now. Again, if you have any questions about it, feel free to email me at fibernymph at gmail.com. Um, let's see, things that are in the shop right now. As I mentioned earlier, I put kits together for these hats, the Allentown hat, um, before my show last weekend in Allentown. Um, it come, the pattern is written for two different sizes, the large and the small, adult large, adult small. Um, slouchy beanie. And I have kits left over from the show 
in five different color combinations. So they are these colors are represented and you get two half skeins of yarn in the kit so you can choose which one you want to use as your main color, which one you use, want to use as your contrast. And honestly, even if you're doing the large size, whichever combination you do, you could make a second hat doing um, if you switch the colors around. So the kit will actually give you, I can't imagine that it would not give you two hats um, unless your gauge is really, really off or you do some really major modifying. You should be able to get two hats out of a kit. Anyway, so the Peacock and Wisp is one of the color colorways, um, the color, color combinations, gosh, words. Um, Wisp and Wild Bergamot is um, another colorway that I have in the shop. Then we have, brown. it's dark brown, but it, sometimes it looks green. It's got like a greenish cast to it in some light. So I like to point that out. Um, so dark brown and wisp is another combo. Then there is snapdragon and wisp as a combo. And lastly, merlot and wisp as a color combo. This is the last one of this one, I believe, that I have. And I'm not sure how many of the peacock and wisp are left either. I'm pretty sure I have at least one of those left, but um, yeah. Those are the two that seem to have been the most popular. So those are in the shop now. When you see this, they are up there, um, unless something sells out between now and then, but there should be some there. And I will probably, I will definitely be making more of those too. Um, the other thing that's in the shop was something that I really had wanted to have in the shop before Allentown, um, and I just couldn't get it done. Um, it was the Easter colorways. I mentioned it on the last podcast that I had an idea for an Easter colorway, and I did indeed dye it. I actually dyed two separate versions of it, um, and then I didn't get them reskeined and ready to go up in the shop in time to do it before my show. So I ended up taking them to my show. Some of them sold there, and then earlier this week I did put the remainder in the shop. So again, that's one of those times that, like, having, you know, um, Checking the Instagram page or what have you is a really good thing to know when things are going up. But anyway, <laughs> this was this was what I used for my my uh, show prop. They're bunny peeps. These are dog toys, by the way, brand new. Like my dog hasn't played with them, but I saw them in the store. I'm like, oh my gosh, these are so cute. But they squeak somewhere. There. <laughs> didn't freak my dog out anyway so these five colors were my inspiration for the bunny peeps colorway that I did um, for Easter this year whoops I'm throwing bunnies around right now the only thing that is left is the one that is the five stripes so those five colors in a self striping and the only base that it's left on is the mountain tweed fingering so Everything else is sold out. I did have it some on some other bases. I also had a two stripe that was like a swirl and a speckled colorway. It was super cute, but that one did sell out. I don't know why I'm even telling you because it's like, hey, I did this, but you can't have it now. Um, I do apologize for not getting Easter colorways done earlier than I did. It's just been that kind of a year. So I will definitely do these again next year earlier. But if you, I actually love this colorway on this base because this is not a natural white base. It's got that oatmeal-y color naturally, and so it mutes everything. And I just, I love how these colors look on this base. So anyway, there are, I believe, four skeins of this left in the shop if you're interested. Obviously, you won't have it in time for Easter, which is tomorrow, but, <laughs> you know, it'll be there. Um, another thing that I took to the show that was new, aside from like the big sweater quantities of this yarn, um, which I am going to list eventually in the shop, hopefully in the next week or two, I'm going to go ahead and list those, um, at least some of them. I need to have them available for my show at the beginning of June. I'm supposed to be getting another shipment of this yarn from the mill in time to die more for that show. So I just don't want to wipe myself out. So I'm trying to be a little bit careful. Um, but I definitely will be putting DK weight in the shop in larger quantities um, soon. The fingering I may have to hold off on because that I don't really have much left of it all anyway, just to, to die. Um, but I do have more of the DK. 
Anyway, in addition to that, I did other sweater sets that were inspired by my serendipitously fading sweater. Do you remember that, that I did this year? Um, that was the one where I had dyed kind of a gradient of Merlot's, but then I had that real crazy, like one of a kind, speckly kind of skein that I used, that I faded into here and here. I didn't bring it in, obviously, I'm just showing you. But I've, I've shown it on several podcasts up until when I finished it a while back. Um, I got so many comments on that sweater and questions like, are you going to carry sets for that in the shop? And I thought, well, I really can't because I can't duplicate that color combination at all anyway. Um, but then I had the idea, why not, since it was a serendipity thing to begin with, why not just do up a bunch of one-of-a-kind skeins, a really fun, different, you know, speckly variegated kind of colorways and then put together a fade set to go with it um, for a sweater and the nice thing about it is it's meant they're meant to be used with whatever sweater pattern you want to incorporate them into it's not just that pattern that I used so that's what I did I just as a trial and it was like a really last minute thing that I dyed them up and I thought I don't know I may be taking these and just bringing them all home. As it turns out, a couple of them did sell, and I was so excited about that. So I've got a few left. <coughs> um, three of them are on my Cozy Worsted Weight Base, which is a superwash, 100% superwash merino. One of them is on my Bonafide DK Weight Base, which is also 100% superwash merino. So I will show you that one first, because it's a little bit different in general. Um, I'm calling them the Serendipity Sweater Sets. Um, and you get five skeins of like a tonal, or a color block, or a semi-solid, but this one is tonal. And then one skein of a variegated. Now these are in bags, and I know you can't see super, super well. This is the only set that, this is all, all five of these skeins um, are the same. I mean, they're a, a tonal, um, so they'll be a little bit different because they're hand dyed, but they're kind of a, I don't know, a tealish green, like a teal slash green color. And then this is the um, the crazy one of a kind skein that has all those bright colors. I will be taking pictures of these to put in the shop without them being in the bag, so you'll see them better. But this is the only one that does not have a gradient set with it. So the other ones all are gradient. And so I did one gradient that is, um, it goes from ember to honey, and this is the honey well, this is warm honey, but I'm just calling this the Ember to Honey set. Um, and so here's this one. I love this set. If I didn't already have this sweater made out of this, I'd be so tempted to keep this one. So I don't know how well you can see those colors, but there's your five fading colors. And then here's your crazy color. I mean, I don't know why I'm saying crazy. It's variegated but it's a one of a kind like it won't I won't do them again because I'm not taking any notes on how I'm dying them so there's that one then there's this one and it's so funny my husband looked at it, he's like that is for a specific person and he's right because this color is definitely for a very specific person not any specific person in my mind but like you know there's one person out there who will see this and say oh my gosh fuchsia I have to have a fuchsia sweater set <laughs> Um, because this color is not everybody's thing, but I love how it turned out. So that's the fade set for that. And then these are all the colors in the one of a kind skein. Okay. Then the last one is, it's closer to my sweater. It wasn't done with Merlot. I did it with eggplant, but it's sort of similar. And I used my sweater as a sample at the show. But anyway, this is the eggplant fading colorway. And then these are the colors in the one of a kind stain. So anyway, like I said, I will take photos of all those and put them in the shop, but I will put those in the shop. I am gonna continue to bring those to shows for a while. Um, again, not needles up, but anyway, I just, they were so much fun and I was glad they were well received. I got a lot of compliments on them and I was so glad a couple of them sold because I really, you know, when you take big ticket items to shows, you're never quite sure, you know, if that's going to be something somebody would want or not. So anyway, those are the ones that I have. 
I will keep dyeing more and I will put more in the shop eventually too other than just these four but for right now that's what I've got um, speaking of other shows um, my next show again is Needles Up Maryland which takes place the day before Maryland Sheep and Wool um, so that is Friday May 3rd and as I do every time I do a Needles Up show I do have an exclusive colorway that I'll be offering at Needles Up Maryland this year and here it is super fun I'm calling it getting crabby <laughs> because Maryland's state crustacean, which I didn't know was a thing, but apparently it is for about, I think six states out of the United States have a state crustacean. In addition to a state bird and a state tree and a state flower, they have a state crustacean. And Maryland's is the blue crab. So that is what this was inspired by. These are the colors that you find in the blue crab, believe it or not. I will try to put a picture of the blue crab in here if I remember. But anyway, I did start to knit my sample last night. Here's what it looks like all wound up in the ball. Um, I only got through two of the alternating colors. So the blue is in between all of the other colors. So there's this gray and then the red, which you see kind of on the ends of their little pinchers. And then there's this teal, this deep teal is kind of, well, it's deeper than this, but I went with a little bit lighter teal. Um, you see teal fading in their shell, and then there's sort of a sandy color in here too, which is actually going to be my next stripe. So this this here, there's sort of a sandy color along the ridge of their shell. Um, I don't know. I just thought this was a fun colorway, and I can't wait to see the striping pattern emerge more than it is right now. So I am working on this sock as well as a sample. And like I said, I will have as many skeins of this as I can for the show at Needles Up. Um, I don't do pre-orders for them. They're just sort of first come, first serve. But I will have as many there as I can do. And hopefully, if you're there and you want one, you'll be able to get it. Um... I think that's everything I've got for you today. Uh, again, please follow on Instagram. The at Fiber Nymph Dye Works page is an excellent way to stay in touch with what's happening. Um, the Fiber Nymph Dye Works page on Facebook is another great way. If you aren't already subscribed to the newsletter, I would really recommend you doing that. I only get a newsletter sent out. I, I aim for once a week. It's usually not once a week. It's usually once every couple of weeks. Um, but I try to do that, especially when there's definitely new things going into the shop um, or things that you need to know about. And then the website homepage is always a good t place to see up and coming stuff. I change that up pretty frequently. So fibernymphdyeworks.com. You can always email me again, fiberninf at gmail.com if you have any questions, um, especially anything shop related. But really, that is the best way to get a hold of me if you need a reply or you need for me to see something in a timely fashion. Um, other ways of communicating with me aren't always the best. <laughs> so anyway, I think that's everything. Thank you so much. I will talk to you again, hopefully in a week or two. It'll definitely be before Maryland. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I hope you're having a great weekend. I hope it's sunny and beautiful where you're at. And again, if you celebrate Easter, have a lovely Easter. I know Passover, I believe, is going on now-ish too, or already has. If that is what you celebrate, I hope that is good as well for you. Um, until next time. Bye.